Welcome everyone to another segment of my video blog. Today we are discussing origins of life. Um, there are a couple different origins of life, origin theories, I guess you would say, origin theories. Um, my class decided it'd be easiest to split the origin theories into, uh, well, actually just split them up between the class and cover them individually. So what I'm doing is I'm covering the Miller-Urey or um, origin theory. Now, what the, Mil the Miller-Urey um, origin theory is that there was an, the um, two scientists, Harold Urey and Stanley Miller, together performed an experiment that uh, simulated the conditions that were thought at the time, at these two scientists' time, that it was believed that these conditions were what it was like on um, Earth's surface so, oh so many millions of years ago. Um, what And so they attempted to recreate how life started in um, Earth's atmosphere. And so what they did is um, they tested Alexander Oprins and JBS Halden's hypothesis that the primitive Earth's surface conditions favored chemical reactions that would eventually build organic compounds out of inorganic chemicals and create essentially what you needed to build a life and us. Uh, this experiment that they performed is considered a very classic origin of life experiment, very basic, but I, I believe it's one of the cooler ones. Um, the experiment itself was conducted in 1952 and published in 1953 by Stanley Miller and Harold Urey at the University of Chicago. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the actual experiment itself. If you look here, you'll find the method of which they conducted the experiment. The question that they were trying to answer was, can organic compounds be generated under conditions similar to those that existed on the primeval or primitive Earth, so Earth millions and millions and millions of years ago? Can we actually create organic compounds out of things that simply existed in the atmosphere? And if you look at the method, they have a glass uh, here, this whole setup is all glassware, and it's all sealed so that no oxygen can get in. It's completely sealed. Everything in there is uh, what will be in there forever in the experiment. There's nothing coming in or out of the system. Um, but we have here the oceanic compartment, which is just water, halfway filled up with water. And then here we've got the atmospheric compartment, which is filled with a bunch of gases like um, methane. All these gases include hydrogen gas, methane, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and nitrogen. And then you've got, of course, H2O water down here. So what would happen is heat would be added to the water. The water would become water vapor, and it would travel all the way up this tube here, all the way up this, and into the next compartment which held all the gases. Now when everything was in there, an electrical charge would be um, put through the compartment, through these rods right here that you see, um, and that would cause an, a reaction, and I'll go over the different reactions that they are, but anyway, this whole process was simply repeated and repeated, and as you can see, the um, water vapor and the other gases would follow down this tube here and be condensed back into a liquid form after passing through this tube surrounded by another tube that was flowing cold water so that the gases in here would condense and it'd come down here and it'd all collect in here and get push, pushed back up into the uh, oceanic compartment again so the process would repeat itself and after chemical reaction after chemical reaction eventually what happened was what you see over here. So if you look at this chart over here we've got here you. Uh, show the initial products, which are water, nitrogen, ammonium. You can see the list right there. 
um, you would then add energy. Here in our first group of intermediate products, you have um, aldehydes and hydro hydro <laughs> hydrogen cyanide. Then in the second group of intermediate products, so this process is just continuing, in the second group you have propionic acid, acidic acid, um, formic acid, uh, urea, and and methyl urea. Then once all those products had been recombined yet again through this same process, um, you would end up with such basic building, uh, building blocks of life like lactic acid, glycine, and glycolic acid. So this experiment provided actual proof that if the atmosphere of Earth if the conditions on Earth millions of years ago were anywhere near like this, that life can actually be created through uh, chemical processes. Now, this wasn't the only uh, project or experiment that had been done on this. In fact, in 2007, after Steve after Stanley Miller died in 2007, scientists went back and observed the actual um, vials from the original experiment conducted in 1952. And what they found was that the, um, the vials contained organic compounds, t like more than 20 organic compounds, which was much more than uh, Miller and Urey originally thought that they had in there. And when they um, discovered later on that the Earth actually had more volcanic activity, they added in such compounds as sulfur into the same experiment with the original chemicals from the uh, Miller-Urey experiment and got the same result. Life still, um, organic compounds were still created and still made and in fact, actually more were created than the original 20. So Miller Urey did in fact answer the question that they were asking. Can organic compounds be generated under conditions that were similar to the um, primitive Earth, the early Earth? And the answer is yes, absolutely it can. Um, we are simply missing the steps between what they did or the primordial soup and uh, what what we are today. We're just missing that in between how we went from mere organic compounds to complex organisms. Um, but that's, that's a, another video blog for another day. So I will say I do, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please spread, spread my videos around and uh, give me feedback. Good night.